Welcome to SVG TV News for Friday, May 5th, 2017. I am Rochelle Batiste with the details. Three days of arguments presented in the election petitions case concluded today at the High Court in Capital Kingston, with Justice Esco Henry announcing that she will deliberate and then give her ruling to the registrar. Justice Henry was cautious not to give any specific date or time frame when she will give her ruling. During the session today, she listened intently to the petitioners led by Queen's Counsel Stanley Stocky John as he made a reference to the Constitution and cited various cases to strengthen his arguments, ensuring that she conducted the hearing with parity. At one point, Justice Henry referred to an email she received from the petitioners concerning audio recordings. In a matter-of-fact way, she cautioned everyone that she should not be emailed in such instances. The petitioners respectfully apologized to Justice Henry and Queen's Counsel John lauded Justice Henry for her professionalism and admitted that he was thankful that the hearing was over. Relieved. So... So you feel relieved. What do you feel relieved about? What area do you think was your strong point? No particular area. Just relieved it's over. This part of the proceedings. And this situation about the email that the judge wanted to clarify and make sure that everything was in order, she was fair and, and, and making sure that there was clarity. What's, give us a little information on this. Um, I've said everything to be said about that in court. <laughs> it's no major issue as far as I'm aware. All that I have to say on that, I've said it in court. And deliberation um, coming up with her, how you feel about that? Do you think it will go in your favor? I'll wait. I'll wait for the judges. I'll wait for the judgment. Additionally, lead attorney for the respondents, Anthony Astefan, credited uh, John in the presentation of his arguments and also had high praises for Justice Henry in her deliberations. How do you feel about your arguments today? You know what I love about today? You look lovely, the weather is beautiful, the sun is warm and nice and I feel good. So what do you think will stand out for you? Because the judge seems that she's, you know, ready to give a deliberation in a while. Well, she did say, she did say it'll take some time. I, I don't know what, how long that would be. I, I think that if the consequences is a strikeout, she was going to take her time and do it properly because it is going to be a difficult decision knowing the consequences of it one way or the other. So um, but I'm, I'm happy the way things went. I think despite the differences in opinion, Stocky John and I conducted a, a professional approach without too much heat, between, without too much heat passing between us, you know. And I think that's a good example for the younger lawyers to know that you can do hotly contested cases without cussing each other and chopping in the back. You hear them? Chopping in the back all the time. All they do is chop, chop, chop. Not the crowd, you know. The lawyers on me right at the back, but it's all right. Members of Parliament for the ruling Unity Labour Party, Montgomery Daniel for North Windward and Sir Louis Straker for Central Leeward, both believe that the judge will deliberate fairly and said they are patiently awaiting the ruling. However, Sir Louis said that the opposition is misleading their followers, noting that he won the elections fair and square. Just await the judgment from the court, so that's all we can do at this time. We just await the judgment on that. And how do you feel about the arguments made? Well, the arguments were very good on both sides. And so, what else do we do then? Await the judgment. Thank you. How do you feel, Mr. Straker? Smiles, all smiles. Well, I'm glad that this has come to an end. Hopefully, it is final. Uh, we can't be too sure. It all would be within the domain of the judge, whatever she decides. But I feel confident that the judge would decide very fairly. We've had um, first, well, the hearing dealing with the motion to strike out. 
and um, I'm not a lawyer. I don't pretend to be one, and some of the arguments I cannot competently evaluate. But we must not forget the reason why we have this whole court scenario. It is simply because the opposition wants the seats of not Winwood and Central Leeward. Now I have said before that I have won my seat on five occasions and if I were to run again on six occasions the people would support me because they know I deliver for them. What is bothering me is the fact that the opposition seems to be misleading their followers and their followers are not thinking. And the New Democratic Party's candidate for Central Leeward in the December 2015 general elections, Benjamin Exeter, said he believes that justice will prevail in the interests of the people. Yes, I'm very proud of uh, my legal counsel today. Uh, I think they did a really, really good job. And uh, I'm sure, I'm positive that uh, justice will prevail. Okay. And Mr. Um, Stryker says that he's confident that, you know, he's won the election and, you know, this is just a waste of the, the, the court's time, basically. But um, he's, however, proud of the, the fight, the arguments that his team has made. But what have you to say to this that, you know, well, the taste, he's already won? The taste of the pudding is in the eating. So when we finally get there and the ballot boxes are open and, uh, and the judge will determine the, the actual outcome of, of the case at that time. I mean, we decided to file a petition for a reason based on the final count on, on the day in Central Leeward, and that's what brought us here today. So I'm very confident that we will prevail. Opposition leader Dr. Godwin Friday said he is also optimistic about the pending ruling. He told our news team that he believes that a final resolution will come forth that will please the people of SVG. Well, I'm happy that we've had the hearing and that the judge has ensured that we completed it today. And I'm um, very, very pleased with the presentations that we made, that our council made. And I'm always hopeful and optimistic about our case because we know that the preparation that was done, that the, the, the nature of the law as it is, and the evidence that is there, that uh, we're very optimistic and confident about it. But of course, the judge has given the parties an opportunity to present the case, and um, our lawyers did an excellent job in doing so, and we have to now wait for the judge's decision. She has said that she needs a little time to, to prepare it because it's a fairly complex matter, but I'm sure that she will get it done as quickly as possible so that we can have this matter move forward. And we are looking forward to that. You know, I'm seeing all the people who are out here, a lot of hopes of intentions, uh, people far and near who are relying on this matter. And we hope that um, we will have a result soon and that there will be something for them to be uh, cheering about. And St. Vincent and the Grenadines can have a resolution of this matter finally. It's taken way too long and we're looking forward to a final resolution of it. In other news, three persons are in police custody assisting with the investigation into the death of two brothers, one of whom was a police officer. The bodies of the two, PC 400 Dan Roy Cozier, along with his younger brother Nicholas Cozier, were discovered just after midday on Thursday, lying in some bushes at the Cyan Hill Beach front with what appears to be a gunshot wounds. Commenting on the double homicide today, Deputy Commissioner of Police Acting Colin John said it is just not a good day for members of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force. The Deputy Commissioner of Police said they have lost a valued member and noted that the investigations into the killings are being carried out in an expeditious manner. He, his body was discovered in the area of Cyan Hill Bay. He, along with his, the body of his brother, was found on that beach. The police carried out, uh, carried out investigations into that matter. We got the report about midday yesterday, sometime after 12 yesterday. An anonymous caller called and gave us the information that two bodies were seen on the Cyan Hill Bay. They appeared to be dead. We immediately dispatched different units from the Royal St. Vincent and Grenadines Police Force. They confirmed that the two bodies were there. They also indicated that the persons appeared to be dead. The doctor was summoned 
he pronounced the person's <coughs> dead. We were able to ascertain the identity of first uh, Dan Roy Cozier and then his brother Nicholas Cozier. When asked if the killing of a police officer changes the nature of the investigations, John stated that it does not, adding that the same level of professionalism is being applied as with any other case. The police, we investigate every crime with the same degree of seriousness and professionalism. It is difficult for us, lost in a member of the constabulary. It hits close to home, but we cannot wallow in self-pity. We cannot allow emotion to get the best, the best of us. We have to f face the situation, avoid the emotional aspect of it, approach the situation in a professional manner, and do diligent investigations. So the same we would do with a vagrant, the same we would do with a president, we do the same level of professionalism and the same high standard that we aspire to. It is a shocker to the members of the public. The perception of crime is sometimes even worse than the reality of the situation. And members of the public may start being fearful that, okay, the crime is getting out of hand. We are trying our best to ensure the members of the public that we are doing all in our powers to make sure that they are comfortable, that St. Vincent and the Grandin is safe. Praising PC400 Cozier for his service rendered to the RSVG Police Force, Deputy Commissioner John noted that he was a devoted officer. He joined the Royal St. Vincent and the Grandin's Police Force on the 31st of December 2012. So that made about four years he was a member of the police force. He worked at Central Police Station at SSU, Georgetown Police Station, and he was currently posted at Mesopotamia Police Station. From the, his record at the New Orleans St. Vincent Grenadines Police Force, there was no report of any infraction or any act of dishonesty or any deviant behavior on his part. He was a very hard-working and very dedicated police officer. He gave of his best at all times based on the information that I have received. SVG TV News team attempted to speak with the immediate families of the two Cozier brothers, but they were too devastated to speak with us. And Cozier's killing comes just one year after the death of Officer Charles, who was stabbed and killed while on duty at a school fair. Assistant Commissioner of Police Frankie Joseph said the force is open to offer any support for those officers who are emotionally overwhelmed. Two days ago was a year since we have lost um, Officer Charles. And, um, you know, on the heels of, of that year, now we, we lost um, PC Koja, Kozia. And um, you could just imagine, you know, the, the trauma that um, some of our members are really going through, all of us really. And, but you know, as human beings, some would take it, um, would be able to dealt with it, deal with it better than, than others. And one of the things that we have done as, um, as the hierarchy of the, of the organization is to work with the Ministry of Education and um, will be getting counselors to 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 speak with um, those officers who are not who are not handling it um, as as good as, as as the others as the carnival development cooperation prepares to officially kick start activities for Vinci Mass 2017 with the launch and event tomorrow, Saturday, May 6, 2017. The top brass of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force are appealing to Vincentians to have clean and safe fun throughout the season. Speaking on their preventative and safety strategies, Deputy Commissioner Actin Colin John, Assistant Commissioner of Police Frankie Joseph, along with Superintendent Ruth Jacobs, all indicated that members of the police force are well prepared for tomorrow's launching event and what lies ahead. If you, if you 
would, ob would have observed over the years that um, Carnif the launching of Carnival itself have been, have been pretty much secure. Um, we hardly had you know, any serious incident, and that is because we have what we put in place have been working. And each year, what we do, we improve on what we have over the, over the previous years. One of the things we are asking the general public not to do for this weekend, and not only for this weekend, whenever they are going to any function, it's please not to walk with any weapons. Because you leave home to come to enjoy yourself, and weapons should not be a part of enjoying yourself. CID is always a part of the security team. When it comes to, to Carnival, we have our work cut out for us, and we have put a system in place already, and we will be making sure that we do whatever we have to do to ensure that it's safe. We expect the police to be the professional self. We are asking the member of the public, while you enjoy yourself, while you have fun, to do it in moderation, to be well behaved in your, as you go about enjoying Vinci Mass. It's 40 years, let's show that we have matured enough to have clean, fun, and still have an enjoyable time. The Fisheries Division will continue to do its part to ensure the sustainable development of the fisheries sector through the effective management of the local marine resources. Uh, that's according to Jennifer Crookshank Howard as she spoke at the launch of activities for Fisherman's Month of Activities 2017. Uh, this year's activities will be held under the theme uh, Save SVG Sea Turtles One Turtle at a Time with the slogan Catch No Turtle, Eat More Fish. Howard said an important aspect of the department thrust is to encourage the sustainable use of the marine resources and that they have been engaged in several activities to achieve their objective. Here, the fisheries division has deployed two more fans, the fish aggregating devices, offshore the fishing communities of Barley and Leyu to further assist the fishers from those communities and the surrounding areas to reduce uncertainties of fishing activities daily. Fisherman's Day 2017 is celebrated under the theme Save St. Vincent's SVG's Sea Turtles, One Turtle at a Time, and the slogan, Catch No Turtle, Eat More Fish. The sustainable use of the marine environment and the governance of our oceans are two important aspects for the fisheries division and the fisher folk of SVG. And within recent times, there has been a global push for the conservation of sea turtles. Howard thanked all stakeholders in the fisheries sector for their continued work and dedication in developing the sector. Several workshops have been conducted to train persons in the rural communities in turtle watching. Conservation work is still ongoing with the visits to primary and secondary schools and consultation with fisher folk. The distribution of posters, flyers, rulers and stickers with information pertaining to the sea turtle conservation. 2017 may be swiftly passing, but there is still a lot of work to be done. This work, however, cannot be done without you, the fisher folk and the people of this country upon whom this industry is built. And the Fisheries Division would like to thank you for all your hard work and your continued support to the Fisherman's Day Committee as we continue to manage and develop the industry during this time as we celebrate 42 years of Fisherman's Day. Thank you. Also speaking at the launching event was Fluminense Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, Raymond Ryan, who said the department remains committed to the preservation of SVG's marine resources, which is necessary for sustainable development, food security and poverty alleviation. The effective management and conservation of the living aquatic resources used by the fishing industry are necessary to ensure 
their contribution to sustainable, sustainable development, poverty eradication, and food security in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The effectiveness and performance of our management measures in our country are conditioned by the social, economic, and political circumstances. And we must always remember this. Therefore, the Ministry of Agriculture and the Fisheries Division will continue to manage our resources in a sustainable manner so as to maintain our marine resources. I am we volunteering for impact. That's the broad team under which young leaders from secondary schools across St. Vincent and the Grenadines are carrying out various initiatives to effect change in the society. Aiming to contribute to this year's RBC Young Leaders Program, the Thomas Saunders Secondary School Young Leaders 2017 have selected five tasks to further address underlying issues in the society deemed as a high-five initiative. This year, the group is working under the sub-team volunteering for brighter days, working hand in hand to make a change. Nikita Tony tells us more in this report. 2017, Thomas Saunders Secondary School Young Leaders are determined to make a change in their society as they roll out five tasks through their High Five initiative, three of which have already been completed. Working under the sub-team volunteering for brighter days, working hand in hand to make a change, the young leaders, while speaking to SVG TV yesterday, express their elation to be a part of this year's RBC Young Leaders Program. President of the group, Akela Oliver, outlined the three tasks which have been completed thus far, noting that the work has influenced the group greatly. High Five, where we address five major problems in society. So far, we have completed three, which are our hour and a half fun, which was held last Friday, 80%, which went to the school feeding program at our school. We visit the St. Benedict's home in Georgetown, and the lowest one at home, England. To go out and communicate with people, understand their problems, and try to gather different consequences. Noting that the five tasks seek to tackle prominent issues within the society, PRO of the 2017 Young Leaders, Eurosha Fergus, outlined the two remaining tasks to be completed. When we visited the St. Benedict's home in Georgetown, we interacted with disabled children as, well, persons, and it was interesting. I enjoyed what I did. We sang with them. We played games, we went on playground rides. We visited the Lewis Bennett home, England, where we interacted with the elderly, where we sang songs with them, read scripture verse, learned a lot of, more about them. Two major projects left, or two biggest projects, which are the cleanup of our school environment and a closed drive along with feeding of the homeless. The group is also preparing to complete its major project, which is to construct a lunch site at the school, which according to the vice president of the group, Alia Nero, will aid in having a cleaner school environment. Came up, well, we come up with this idea because over the past years we've been eating in our classrooms and, well, it wasn't very pleasant because we leave our garbage like under the desk and the classroom is most mostly untidy um, a lot of times when the teacher enters. So I think that the project behind of the school will be very successful once it is completed and it will be very nice and the era will be beautified. Highlighting the hard work of the young leaders, coordinating teacher Kamisha Brown commented on the completed projects as well as those upcoming. Students have been working very hard to achieve their objectives. So far they have completed three of five projects. We still have our major project left to complete. Um, it has been a challenge, but we are working towards um, 
successfully completing this project. Nikita Tony reporting for SDG TV News. And students attending the Helping Hands Center now benefiting from a newly refurbished playing environment. Earlier this week, the intermediate high school young leaders handed over a newly refurbished playing room to the center. Speaking at the handing over ceremony, Vice President of the Intermediate High School, Everett Jackson, said his team was delighted to be part of the project, which would be of great benefit to the students attending the Helping Hands Center. Today, the 2017 IHS Young Leaders are happy to be handing over the newly refurbished playing room to the Helping Hands Center. Over the few weeks, we have been working very hard to complete this room. We have been painting, cleaning, drying, and even making charts for the children. Under the team volunteering today, we rise by lifting others. The 2017 IHS Young Leaders will certainly rise by lifting others. Principal of the Intermediate High School, Elspeth Latchman, uh, said she is proud of the work done by the Intermediate High School uh, students and said the children attending the center will thoroughly enjoy the newly refurbished uh, space. I am indeed overwhelmed to be standing here today as part of our 2017 Young Leaders Group. The team is one that is really very fitting. They're volunteering for impact and I think they made quite an impact here at the Helping Hands Center. I am happy that these students can go away feeling a sense of fulfillment since they would have done a job that perhaps they never thought they would have been able to do ever before. Congratulations are in order for all of our young leaders and I know that the children and the staff at the Helping Hand Centre will have a ball in their new playroom. Also making remarks was the coordinator at the Helping Hands Center, Anis John Daisy, who thanked and commended the young leaders for their hard work. Elated to, to have the young leaders doing such, did such a wonderful job. When we came in that morning, the place was so bright and the students had a tour and they were really, really excited. So I just want to thank the young leaders and the persons who coordinate this program and i want to encourage you to continue to do do a good work do continue to do a good work because with your talent you can reach very far and uh, i know the students are happy and the room is so beautiful i think they will be so comfortable in their in the new space so i just want to say again on behalf of the students and the parents Thanks so much for bringing a light into the, this, um, the Helping Hand Center and uh, continue to do what you are doing. It's a beautiful job. 